You know what, El Trafico lacks in star power tonight, it's gonna make up for in grit, and I am all in on that. The man who discovered Fernando Valenzuela has passed away, and the LA Times slammed USC and UCLA for leaving for the Big Ten, which probably makes it the right move, wouldn't you say? Hi, I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and start for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is Faithful Angelinos. It's July 8th, 2022. I've just finished an overnight shift and I can't wait to leave this place because I am tired of the Midwest. It's where people think overalls are a fashion statement. I need real people. But let's talk a little LA sports. If you like the content we've been putting out, click and clack the like button. Click and clack the subscribe button. There's a notifications bell. Hit that. Because we put out videos between 9 and 10 a.m. It'll let you know it's there. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. I'm so tired of talking with people who chew tobacco. I'd like real people for a change. Now, before we get to the big news and stories around L.A., let's check the scoreboard. Tony Gonsolin's now 11-0. Mookie Betts hits two home runs. Dodgers are on a four-game winning streak. They beat the Cubs 5-3. They lead the NL West by six games. And speaking of winning streaks, well, Sparks, that was fun while it lasted, huh? Seattle 106, Sparks 69. Hmm. And meanwhile, tonight, uh, the Cubs will play the Dodgers again at seven. That's Tyler Anderson, he's nine and one, versus Keegan Thompson, seven and three. And El Trafico, the Galaxy, will face LAFC at Bank of America State, uh, Bank of California Stadium. That's at seven o'clock. Before we start talking El Trafico, I want to correct something, not a mistake of mine, but a mistake of Taylor Twelman's. He was saying yesterday, and we reported on it, that the Galaxy was, quote, 100% in on a bidding for Manchester United striker Jesse Lingard. Wrong. Wrong. I told you guys yesterday that I would treat it with a grain of salt, and man, we got a we got a bucket full of salt. Twelve Men comes back yesterday on Twitter. No, the Galaxy are bidding on. Way to hold, way to hold your credibility to a high standard, dude. Um, but as for El Trafico, there is a lot of hype surrounding this match tonight, which is strange because a lot of the new players that have been hyped won't be playing. Gareth Bale, he's not even in LA at the time that I make this recording. So the idea that he's going to make a transcontinental flight appear out of nowhere and play, it's kind of unlikely. Meanwhile, for the Galaxy, designated player Douglas Costa is out, which, by the way, I would assume the supporters are actually in favor of. But the Galaxy also recently signed defensive midfielder Gaston Brugman, and he won't be playing either. There is a new star on the horizon for LAFC, Giorgio Chiellini, is playing. He's a uh, he's an Italian legend. He probably will play tonight, but the question is, if he does play, how many minutes? We have no idea. Now, the Galaxy and LAFC are in positions where they've pretty much been throughout the entirety of the El Trafico rivalry. LAFC is atop the Western Conference. They're, they have 36 points. They're nine points ahead of the Galaxy at this point. Galaxy in fourth in the Western Conference. But despite the fact that LAFC is usually higher up on the table, the Galaxy keep beating them. The Galaxy are 2-0 and versus LAFC this year. Both of those wins, by the way, came at Dignity Health Sports Park, where LAFC has never won. Now, LAFC actually fares a little better over at Bank of California Stadium. Against the Galaxy, two wins, one loss, three ties out there. So we're going to look at tonight's matchup. And I want to start off by, I always try to be as fair as possible, even though I'm a Galaxy supporter. I try to be as fair as possible with LAFC. And honestly, I applaud their grit. I do. Because for times this year, they didn't have Carlos Vela on the pitch, they would still win. They wouldn't have Chicho Arango. 
they'd still win. So it's not as flashy, but they're grinding out victories, which is something that you would want if you're a fan. I think in that sense, it's to their benefit that Gareth Bale probably doesn't play tonight. Look, you're gonna take somebody, when you're, you're a team that you already know what you're doing, you know what your identity is, and now in the middle of a rivalry game, you're gonna pull out who? Bella, Arango, and throw in Bale? And he doesn't even know who his teammates are really just yet? And if you're already on the pitch, do you really want to play free and loose, knowing that if you make one wrong pass, you can be subbed out for Gareth Bale? So no, I think it's to the LAFC's, oddly enough, I think it's to LAFC's benefit if he doesn't play at this juncture. Uh, I am curious to see what Chiellini does. You see, because LAFC, when they concede goals, it's often by counterattack. And how does Chiellini counter that? Because he can't run like a 20-year-old anymore. He's, he's in his late 30s. But he is a physical player. So let's say the Galaxy does attempt a counterattack. Does he knock somebody on their ass? Does he knock Chicharito on his ass? It's a distinct possibility. But again, how many minutes does he get? Now, meanwhile, if you're talking about the Galaxy, the Galaxy have made progress from last year, but have they made enough? You see, the team does play, usually play sound defense, which has been a problem that LAFC hasn't been able to counter. Now, they were able to do it by a 4-2-3-1 formation. They had two defensive midfielders helping out the back line. But Monday, they switched to a 4-4-2. The purpose of switching the shape of the team's formation was to get two strikers up top. Because Chicharito, there was a lot of focus on him. So they put Dejan Jovalik up top as well. And voila, four goals on Monday night. Galaxy haven't done that a whole hell. So we don't necessarily know what we're going to get, but I will say this, Jovalik is going to be a problem for LAFC. Because if he scores tonight, he, who is a who normally is a sub, will have tied Zlatan's Galaxy record, Zlatan Ibrahimovic's Galaxy record, with goals in five consecutive matches. That's extremely impressive. So is it enough progress? See, at this juncture, for the Galaxy, they're in position to sweep El Trafico this year. And for that reason, and I love me some Galaxy, I'm choosing LAFC. I think LAFC at this juncture is more sound knowing who they're going to be. They're playing in front of their home fans where they do know how to win. It is a fortress up there. And uh, I think the Galaxy don't quite know yet how they're going to continue to function on defense in a 4-4-2. They played it against Montreal. Montreal is not LAFC. Now, if you're a longtime Dodger fan, before Dodger Stadium was remodeled, you'd see a guy behind a screen at home plate pointing a radar gun at the opposing pitcher taking down their speeds. And that guy was also a scout. He was down in Mexico decades ago, and he notices this chubby left-hander. And this was rare to actually think this kid had a future because prior to then, there were fewer than 40 Mexican players who had ever reached the major leagues. It was extremely rare for a Mexican player to reach the majors. But on Mike Brito's insistence, LA signed that pitcher. And then they taught the pitcher how to throw a screwball. And soon, Fernando Valenzuela became an international sensation. Fernando mania swept beyond LA. It swept from coast to coast, and it damn sure went back to Mexico. And what of that impact? Because now Mexico does produce baseball players for the majors on a regular basis. You go to Dodger games even now, and you'll see Valenzuela jerseys worn. That tells you how much of an impact that this player had. And, of course, the scout who discovered him. Mike Brito, by the way, died yesterday at the age of 87. And, by the way, his impact even resonates today. Because one of the Dodgers' starting pitchers, Julio Arias, Mexican-born, 
discovered by Mike Brito. If you're a Dodgers fan, take note. He is an unsung hero to the men in blue. Future heroes for the men in blue, possibly. Prospects Diego Cartea, pitcher Bobby Miller, and Miguel Vargas will all play in the Futures game on July 16th at Dodger Stadium. The LA Times wrote in an op-ed that USC and UCLA, quote, won ugly by moving to the Big Ten. And the only word I heard was one. See, I don't care about winning ugly. If you're a fan, you don't either, okay? Winning ugly in sports is still a win. The Dodgers, they have half their team injured. They're still winning. I don't care if it's ugly. They're up six games. That's beautiful. The Kings didn't score a lot last year. They still made the playoffs. It was beautiful. You know, uh, the Galaxy win ugly. LAFC, when they don't have Carlos Vela and they still win. It's ugly. You know what? Nobody cares. It's a win. It's a win. It's a win. Stop judging LA Times. It is a win. Take the win. Ugly wins equal beautiful championships. That was a little too serious for the room. I get it. Uh, DeMarcus Ware told Sports Illustrated that Von Miller never had an interest in returning to L.A. Quote, I'm done with the Rams, bro. Thanks for the ring, bro. I mean, I get it. It sounds harsh when somebody says that about the Rams. But keep in mind, he wanted to be in Dallas. And he didn't get it because Dallas couldn't afford him. So instead of being where he grew up, he had to go to Buffalo to get paid. So, yeah, it, it's an insult to the Rams. But if revenge is a dish best served cold, it don't get any colder than Buffalo. Bro. Kawhi Leonard, uh, we were told his injury and that it had healed to the point where he could do pretty much whatever he wanted in practice. Wrong. Wrong. He can't participate in anything five on five, a scrimmage or five on five drills. They won't let him do it. So maybe it's not a big deal, but he's got limits. So we have to keep an eye on that. The LA Kings didn't draft in the first round of the NHL playoffs or the NHL draft tonight. It's the second round. They do get the 51st pick. Meanwhile, in addition to that, they made a hire for the front office. Uh, Manon Rayon. She's a former goaltender. She is now the hockey operations advisor. When she played exhibition games for the Tampa Bay Lightning, she became the first woman to play in a major sport league on this continent. I have a problem with this hiring. I do. It's not because she's a woman, because she probably, there's no question, she knows more about hockey than I ever will, and I love hockey. So she's way more qualified than I could ever be. The problem is she should be in LA. And with this job, she gets to stay in Michigan. There is a reason the Kings moved their minor league affiliate from New Hampshire all the way to the IE. It's because you need to have your people close to you. This smacks of special treatment. And for what? For what? She needs to prove herself. And one way to do it she needs to be in L.A. Just saying. The Lakers gave Troy Brown Jr. Carmelo's jersey number, and the national press was like, oh my God, what does this mean? What does this mean for Carmelo? What do you mean? We all know what it means. They don't want Carmelo back. Stop. Take the obvious result and move on with your life, you dummies. Speaking of obvious results, it's probably going to be a Galaxy win tonight, even though I thought LAFC had the better advantage. Hey, if you like this broadcast, don't forget to like and subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We are trying to build something here for LA sports. My name's James. Thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corta El Queso production. Have a great day. Bye-bye.